welcome to the CE Pro Podcast. I'm Executive Editor Arlen Schweiger. As custom installation becomes more entrenched in areas such as lighting fixtures and power over Ethernet, battlegrounds are developing between the worlds of low voltage electronics and high voltage electrical. The natural evolution of technology has led integrators to expand into these growing areas, while electricians in many cases look to protect their turf by working to have local and state municipalities pass potentially restrictive laws against CE Pros. That's when CEDIA's often unheralded role of advocacy for the industry becomes so important. At the upcoming CEDIA Expo 2022 in Dallas, CEDIA will be holding its first ever advocacy town hall open to all attendees. At this breakfast event being held on September 29th, attendees are asked to come ready to share information and find out how they can work with CEDIA to advocate for the industry. CEDIA's global president and CEO, Daryl Friedman, and director of government affairs, Darren Riemann, Laid it all out for CE Pro's Jason Knott in this week's podcast episode. As always, be sure to subscribe to CE Pro's YouTube channel and hit that like button on our videos, or subscribe to the CE Pro podcast on Apple and Spotify and leave a review. You know, one of the key unheralded roles that CEDIA plays in the industry is advocacy. The association spends copious amounts of time fighting for legislation that can help advance the custom electronics industry. And on the flip side, CD is out there working to potentially stop new legislation that could be restrictive, uh, that could possibly become laws that can limit uh, integrators' ability to compete on a level playing field. So with me today to talk about this advocacy situation and what the association is doing and how integrators can get more involved are CEDIA Director of Government Affairs, Darren Riemann. Hi, Darren. Good afternoon. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for joining me today. And also Global President and CEO, Daryl Friedman. Hey, Daryl. Good to be back with you. All right. So we are here to talk about something in particular that's very exciting that CEDIA is announcing and is going to be debuting at CEDIA Expo 2022 in Dallas. And that is something called the Advocacy Town Hall. So Daryl, tell us exactly what that is. Well, we'll be convening all of our members and non-members, everybody who's attending CD Expo to learn about the important issues that are happening that affect their business day to day. Many people don't even realize it, but the government relations and the regulations that happen in their local jurisdiction and their states and federal government impact their business and actually could, in, in the worst situation, and if CD wasn't here, if Darren wasn't here, could actually shut down their business. So what we want to do is educate the community about the importance of advocacy, what CD has been up to and doing for this advocacy work, but also how they can get involved. We want to get people in, involved in their own businesses. This is the, the lifeblood of their business. The government can decide whether you have a robust business or whether you have no business. And we want all of the, the people in this community, all the integrators and manufacturers to be part of that campaign with us. All right, uh, Darren, let's dig into kind of the details of, give us a sense of, you know, first of all, exactly when and where it's going to be taking place at, at CD Expo. And then let's talk about the format of it. So when and where? So we're kicking off, it's right before um, the trade show floor opens on Thursday, September 29th. It's a breakfast, a free breakfast that will provide an opportunity for members and non-members to come together to hear about uh, stories from past uh, advocacy victories and hopefully learn how they can get involved and, and step up and protect their businesses through the advocacy process and be a voice for their business and their industry. So you're going to have some integrators who have faced some of this restrictive legislation from various sources and talk about one, what it meant to their business, whether it passed or hopefully didn't pass, and then how CEDIA worked with them to uh, kind of combat that situation or promote a, a potentially positive uh, uh, law. Correct. So we're going to have two, uh, two integrator firms, um, one from California and one from Houston. This past year, we've been working actively at the municipal level in the city of Houston on a licensing and permitting issue. Um, so we'll have kind of a, a current example being in Dallas, being in Texas um, from, from the city of Houston, and that work will continue. Um, and then we'll also have a past um, different from licensing, um, the uh, regulatory issue that wanted to regulate um, the energy efficiency of televisions and how that could have impacted 
what televisions an integrator or a CDM member would have been able to install in projects. So those two examples, and then hopefully the takeaway for everyone that attends is learning how they can get involved and step up and, and, be, and be a part of this important process. Like you said earlier, how it impacts their business day to day and that they're, that are, that they're aware that their association is advocating for their industry. Tell us a little bit about how some of these, uh, this legislation is typically arises. Is it at the municipal level? Is it at the state level? Um, and, and then typically, where is it coming from? Is it coming from the security industry, the electrical industry? What are the sources typically? So both sources are primarily from the electrical side as technology has evolved as the tech as what an integrator can install low voltage lighting power over ethernet are large causes for for licensing or, or change in scope of work or who or de definition of who can install what product um, and then it, but it can also come from the security side potentially with the, the home automation and things like that so um, but but it's more common from from the electrical side and it's important that when you do get uh, advocacy message from CEDIA that you take the time to get involved and be part of the process throughout the legislative process because how it's introduced and how it's adopted and amended through the process it, it's a it's a work in progress. How do you typically find out about these things? Is it something that ha you you have a, a member with his ear to the ground or are you monitoring these situations? Yes, so both. Um, CEDIA invests heavily in a, in a tracking system. And then we, so with that, with key kind of with keyword search terms, we pick up legislation. We monitor it from introduction to a, through the amendment process, through the committee process. Um, and so th that's the primary, that's a big way of meaning, but municipal issues are primarily uh, an important part is hearing from our local members of what they're hearing. So if they hear something, you know, please get in touch with me and, 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 you know, we can work, work through the process and the sooner we can, we can hear about it, the, the more time we have to hopefully have a positive outcome for, for our members in that jurisdiction and the industry as a whole. And that's another good reason to come to the town hall too, because you're, you'll learn about things. You know, you might be a Michigan integrator who comes to Expo and there's another Michigan integrator who's gonna tell you about, hey, something's happening in our own town or any town across the country. There's not much that Darren misses, but you know, we do hear sometimes from members about things that we didn't know about and we need to get in the fight to make sure that we can protect those businesses. So it's another great reason to network and be with like-minded people, kindred spirits. We wanna help this industry thrive and make sure that Regulation helps us, doesn't hurt us. So Daryl, let me uh, ask you this. Darren brought up a, a really good point a second ago, which was about what's happening with low voltage lighting, mentioned power over ethernet, these two significant trends that are happening in the industry. Do you see the potential for this as, especially lighting fixtures has just become so much more, in, becoming more entrenched in the industry almost every day, it seems like that this could ignite even more potential for uh, backlash from, from other uh, entities out there trying to stop integrators from getting into the lighting business. And I'm thinking of like electrical unions and those sorts of things. Absolutely, it's a real threat. And as Darren likes to say, the legislature never sleeps. And um, I like to say CEDIA never sleeps. We wanna make sure that we're always keeping these threats at bay and allowing our member companies to do their business uh, in, in environments that are friendly for them. But absolutely, you're gonna see a lot more of this type of legislation. It's an important thing that we have to be mindful of. And really every integrator, I know there are so many things that the companies have to be involved in and keep an eye on in terms of their own businesses, but these issues will depend on whether or not you have a business at all. So I, I just encourage everyone to be involved with this and, and take a stand, stand up for your industry, make sure that you can operate. And then there are always gonna be new issues coming down the pipe. Things that are gonna be invented, you know, we don't even know about yet, but they're gonna be New, new threats for us to make sure that our companies can work in those spaces. So that's why the importance of this town hall and the importance of getting involved with CBS advocacy work, lending your voice to the efforts will help a lot. So Darren, are these, are these laws sometimes tucked away as codicils and other legislation? And it's sometimes, uh, I don't wanna say too late, but it, it's at the, the 11th hour where you're finding about, out about some of these things? I mean, that, that, that's a possibility, especially you have to watch it through the introduction and the amendment process. It could be amended in committee or something like that. And also, 
what we have to keep an eye on is just a few words within a multi-page bill can make all the difference whether it impacts an integrator or does not impact an integrator. So you've got to continue to, to monitor that. And one thing I'd add about the town hall also is we have a strong, as an industry, we have a, and through the pandemic, we have a strong story to tell of the, the value we bring into the residents or a commercial project and stuff like that. And so that's part of the messaging too, is that collectively we have a strong story to tell um, lawmakers and regulatory bodies that the, the important work that the integrators do day in and day out in the projects that they touch so when you're out there in the field and you're battling these uh potentially restrictive uh regulations are you uh, commonly dealing with other low voltage um associations like either the esa or cta or other groups or is it really uh cd is out there you know fighting this battle alone no, we, we try to, okay, we try to step back and, you know, while CDM may, may represent the residential segment or, or part of that, and then there's also the commercial segment and the, and the security segment and the, you know, manufacturers or, or things like that. So we try to present as broad a spectrum as possible. It will impact an integrator, but other segments of the industry are, are, are also impacted. So we want to show that collective impact when we're presenting our case or or asking for a am clarifying amendment or things like that through the process. And the value of that is we need our members to bring that local perspective of, and I, of how that um, a regulation could impact them and the types of projects that they can or could not possibly do. You know, you, you kind of uh, uh, led into my next question there is, what do legislators respond to? Is it this small business element of what our industry represents or is it, hey, you guys are small potatoes. You're not small, you're not big enough. I've got these up, this other uh, union is bigger. It represents more people. Is it, a, is it a numbers game like that or what? It can be a numbers game. And I think that's the importance of the advocacy town hall. And it's also, but I mean, we do play that small business angle and that's pretty receptive as well. But, and that's part of our story. But again, part of the importance of, you know, attending a, a, a legislative meeting or attending a committee hearing or being proactive and attending a, your local town halls, building those relationships out of session are key for in session. So all those steps, and those are things we'll talk about in, in the advocacy town hall leading into Ad Expo. Um, but it's these are all things that small business owners, we wanna encourage our members not only to get involved with, with your association and your industry, but also to take the steps to in district, build those relationships with your local leaders as well. And Can the, you, the legislators, uh, go ahead, Daryl. Legislators um, have a boss, just like we all have a boss and their boss is the constituent. And so if, if we don't have that, those local numbers on the ground, it's less impactful to them. So one of the tools that CDF will be offering to those attending the town hall is a very quick and easy way to write your legislator and get on the record as being somebody who cares about this industry you're a constituent, you're the boss of that person, you vote them into office, you can vote them out of office. And literally you can go to a terminal at the town hall right after and put in your address, a message will go, it, it will determine our software, will, will determine who your representative is in your state, it will go right to that person, you'll get a response. You can then keep up with that person in terms of meetings they're having in district. What Darren said is so important. Uh, somebody said it years ago, all politics is local. So you wanna have those people on the ground that's why we want all of the community to be at this town hall to understand how they can operate. And we'll send them out into their territories and their districts and their states, and they can continue to do the great work. And, and one other thing, Jason, I'd like to raise is, I mean, we're talking a lot about local legislation, but we also have worked, we have examples in the last couple of years of working an issue in Australia, a little different angle uh, requiring you to be a potential engineer instead of an integrator, um, but kind of the same principle. Um, and so I want, you know, all even our, our global members to, to take this serious and understand that as your global association, we're prepared to act in, and advocate on your behalf as well. So it it's not only for for um, local members in Texas or, or throughout the United States, but our but our global membership as well. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Uh, so, Daryl, let me swing back to what you were saying there about that um, 
um, system you're going to have in place at the, at the advocacy town hall. So this is a matter of then getting our industry maybe on the radar of that um, legislator, even if there's not a problem going on in that particular state or municipality. Is that going to be at the local level or who is that going to? Is it a state rep? Is it going to a town, a city advocate? Who's it going to? Well, the beauty of our system is that we can actually direct it to various um, audiences. So, for example, we will create a form letter about um, the low voltage issue. The integrator can put in a little information about their own um, you know, situation, their own company. It will be directed to their state, their district, their you know, local assembly. At the same time, there are other issues we're working on. There are some federal issues on chip um, supplies, supply chain issues, things like that. And that can be redirected to the, the Congress, your actual member of Congress. Um, so it's a very clever system. And I hope you know, people at the town hall, when they're done, they're going to they're going to want to be act on this. They're going to want to use this information that they gleaned at the town hall and use it in a way to better their industry. And this is a way to do that. We need a great nickname for that system, like some sort of like cool name that goes with that, because that is really cool. Yeah, it is. Well, we, that will be a contest. We'll, 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 we'll run that out there. Yeah, we'll have a yeah. name for you before the advocacy town hall. I love it. All right. So for the advocacy town hall, um, attendees should register or how do they make sure that they get a seat uh, at the breakfast and, and during the meeting? Sure. So registration is open now. Um, so as you're registering for Expo or you can also go to cedia.net forward slash advocacy scroll down the page and you can see that there's a description to the town hall and people can sign up um, on there as well. And um, we look forward to, you know, hosting as not only for the expo in, in general, but for the advocacy town hall and kicking off the expo in a positive way with our positive stories of advocacy in the, in the past, but hopefully people being energized and wanting to step up and be a part of this, this campaign in the future. So Darren, is this the type of uh, event that you have to be a CEDIA member to come to? No, it's open to members and non-members as well. We're collectively a part of this industry, so all are welcome to, to attend and participate. And then should they wait to bring any sort of uh, potentially uh, harmful legislation or, or other legislation to, you, uh, to your attention at the advocacy, or you guys are there all the time? No, I mean, please get in touch with me um, through CEDIA's website, through, send an email to me, I'll be in touch. I mean, it's important. I think through the legislative process, the more advanced notice you get, the, the better. So if you have an issue, you know, I mean, certainly bring it to the town hall, but please don't wait until the town hall. Please, please let us work on your behalf. All right, and then just to reiterate, that's Thursday, September 29th, 7.30 a.m. at the convention center. Yes. Yes, uh, breakfast will be served. There'll be some opportunities for networking as well as learning. And of course, this call to action. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear questions. If you're facing an issue in your own uh, municipality, we want to learn about that. So it'll be a real, a truly town hall. We can have everybody interact and have a good dialogue. Yeah, that was going to be a, you, you brought up a question that I was going to ask there is, should they come prepared to say, hey, I just want to let you know what's going on here in my hometown or my county um, this is something on my radar and that kind of in that open forum to, to bring that item out or is that one of those wait and catch me afterwards and, and tell me. No, about no, no. It. We, if you're an expert in this area, we want you there. If you're new to this area, we want you there. This is for everybody to learn and to learn from each other. So it's a great educational opportunity and networking opportunity for all the attendees. So anybody who has those items, we want to hear from that in the Q&A and then many other people will be there to learn for the first time and hear how they can get involved and they can actually affect change for the better in their industry. Yeah, and I think when they see others in the crowd talking about, you know, something happening in their local area or even their statewide level, then that's going to actually encourage more people to want to discuss what's happening and, and, and be on the radar. So, all right, this sounds great. Again, the, uh, the Advocacy Town Hall, uh, Thursday, September 29th, 7.30 a.m. Uh, Darren Riemann and Daryl Friedman, thanks for joining CE Pro today. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. To all of our integrator and manufacturer friends, be sure to submit your top products for CE Pro's Best Awards and great projects for CE Pro's Home of the Year Awards. Find more information and all the deadlines at CEPro.com.